Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through all 18 holes at St. Andrews. Um, this tutorial will be aimed at uh, intermediate to higher skilled players, but some of these fundamentals can be applied to players of any level. So uh, sit back and enjoy my commentary through all 18 holes. And uh, yeah, I'll be telling you about uh, what to expect in all 18 holes of this game of this at this particular course all right so we're going to select a full 18 we're we'll selecting practice round I'm not doing ranked rounds practice rounds we'll be going from the second longest tees medium pin positions fast greens and moderate winds. The reason I'm doing this is because you can expect to encounter these type of conditions when you are playing a head-to-head -head match and uh, you will know what to expect. These conditions are randomized when you play head-to-head -head match but uh, this is what you can expect to see on any given day. Alright, let's tee off. Okay, first hole we have a very um, short par 4 actually, can be reached in, uh, this is a bit of a risk, we could take a risk and go for the green, but we also risk losing a ball. Typically what one person would do is stop their shot in this region over here and let leave themselves a short uh, wedge, a uh, short wedge shot. This is incredibly risky, I'm tempted to go for it, but at the same time I'm worried that the ball would land in the water here. Let's play it like a normal person would play it, we're going to lay up short. In this case I'm going to use a 3 wood. I did select moderate winds and moderate winds apparently at uh, St Andrews is still quite high. But these can get as high as 30-32 miles an hour. Alright, so we're going to take a 3 wood, and I know this is going to carry far, so I'm really not going to use full power. Alright, we're playing safe, as you can see, nowhere near the water. Alright, we've got 82 yards to the flag. We're taking an 80 yard wedge. Now, some of the things to remember about St. Andrews, the greens are quite hard. So I do tend to use a little bit more backspin when I play approach shots on these greens. Uh, wind is ever so slightly from the right to the left. So we want to be aiming slightly right at the flag. This is playing at about... 76 77 yards so we want to use about that much power it translates to roughly 96 percent with some backspin all right and that should be good enough to secure a birdie on the first hole. Not a super easy putt, but we just want to aim outside left and let it feed back towards the hole. Birdie. Right, moving on to hole two. Into this wind, we're probably going to get about 300 yards. You want to aim right because the wind is coming in from the right so this will allow the ball to feed back towards the fairway and we'll probably stop the ball in the region of 290 to 300. A little 
little bit early on the ding. Good ball. Okay, 290 to 300, like I've estimated. Leaving us 100 yards to the flag. I'm going to use a 100 yard wedge. And I'm going to reduce the spin to get the ball to carry and roll a little bit. This is a very tricky green to to be hitting into because this slope over here can really affect what happens to the ball once it lands, especially if it lands a little bit short. Hoping to land in the region of 96 and let the ball just roll a little bit closer towards the hole. Alright, I'm going to be aiming outside the right because the wind is going to push the ball back to the left. Alright, we've got a heartbeat again. Went a little bit further than I expected it to go. Alright, now we left with a fairly tricky putt here. Alright, no guarantee that I'll make this one. This is going to break a little bit more than it looks. Get in. Alright, great stuff. Two, two birdies in a row so far. Okay, now this particular hole, a lot of rough bumps over here which can affect the way the ball kicks once it lands. Um, there's a slope in front of the green over here. Let's have a look at it from another angle if we can get another angle. Yeah. Ideally we want to actually land the ball in front of the green, take some pace off of it and have it roll onto the green. This might say three, you know, 372. It's playing a little bit longer, about 380. Driving this green is very possible for players of many levels. You don't have to have the highest level equipment. Can definitely be done. I'm going to try and do it, which will set myself up for an eagle putt. Just gonna reduce the spin slightly. There's even a risk of rolling off the green at the back. Alright, let's hit this and see what happens. Oh, great, I've even got a heartbeat. The shot is so good that it's going to be setting me up for an eagle putt. Wow, oh, that's one of the best shots I've ever played on this course. Alright, eagle opportunity. <laughs> Alright, so far so good. This is going pretty well. Alright, now the thing about this hole, hole number four, is this narrow piece of fairway is very risky because if your shot is not accurate you can land up in the rough on either side and if I'm not mistaken over here is brush or fescue which is very difficult to get out of um, so what we'll be doing is we're heading into the wind anyway so we probably aren't going to reach 311 yards we're going to be aiming over here let the wind feed the ball back and probably finish in the 290 region over here That carried a lot further than I expected it to. Right, we've got to play it as it is. Hitting into the wind. 
128, you're going to add a couple of yards, about 135. I'm going to give this a bit of backspin. We are hitting out of some rough over here. Right, pretty close to the hole. Not the easiest of putts, about four feet. Another sideways putter would have preferred that to be a little bit closer. Oh dear, just lipped the hole. Alright, so that'll be my first par. Alright, hole number five. We've got a big tailwind over here coming in from the left. Once again, a very narrow section of the fairway over here to aim for. Right, I'll be aiming left. This ball should land in the region of 330. Hoping that the wind brings it back and lets it land in this region of here, 330, and kick forward. And then stop at about 340, 350. The fairways at St. Andrews are pretty hard, so they do tend to kick and bounce forward. Alright, let's do this. Alright, as I expected, carried about 335 and rolled out to 352. That's a huge drive! Another huge drive. Right, now we're left with 131. Make it about 133 with the wind, uh, with the elevation. Plus the wind is going to take some distance off. Playing at about 125, 126. Now there is quite a slope over here that can affect what happens to your ball when it lands if it lands short of the hole if you landed here for example it would kick the ball off to the left and roll away from the flag in that direction as you can see by these slope lines over here all right the wind is going to definitely add some distance what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a touch of backspin bring it out more left. If we land in this region over here, it should hopefully go close to the hole. I'm going to be bringing it in from the left, hoping to land it over here somewhere, and then the ball should roll in this region. That's that's my plan. That's the plan. Not a good shot, but not a great shot. Leaving me with a nine foot putt, right to left. Solid putt. Alright, that's actually an eagle. I seem to have thought it was a par 4, but uh, yeah, eagle. Birdie would have been very possible, very easy. Eagle was actually easy. Right, moving on to hole number 6. Alright, this hole is not particularly difficult. You've got a very wide fairway to aim at, so there should be no reason to miss it. I'm going to be aiming to the left to allow the wind to bring the ball back. This shot should go in the region of 310, 315, so somewhere in this region here. Probably stop there where I'm aiming. Let's give it a smash and see what happens. Way to grip it and rip it. All 
Right, not exactly where I expected it to. The wind didn't push it too much. 315 though was the distance I anticipated. Alright, so now 46 yards to the flag. This is just a short wedge shot. Adding a little bit of backspin to get the ball to stop quickly. We're using about 50 yards power, which is about 83% of a 60 yard wedge. And hopefully set myself up for another birdie. Eighty-three. Right, no heartbeat. It's close enough. Not close enough to be hundred percent confident. Solid putt. Okay, another birdie. Alright, this particular green we can actually reach in one shot. Can be risky though, because if you don't time your shot well, or you don't aim your shot well. But uh, the plan over here, I'm going to give it maximum backspin. This will allow the ball to fly in the air more, and land a little bit softer on the green, hopefully. If not, it's going to land in this region over here. 333, 340. I'm hoping to land just on the green here, maybe in front of the flag. The wind is slightly left to right. So we actually want to aim left of the flag and let the ball come back. Aiming over here, the chances is we could run off the green over here. I'm going to aim left, hopefully stopping the ball within. 15 feet of the hole. Let's give it a swing and see what happens. That's a huge drive! Okay, so that's, that's fine. The uh, elevation uh, took some distance off the ball. Didn't land exactly where I wanted it to. However, it's safe, and that's the important thing, is that I'm pitching now for an eagle. Uh, even if I don't make it, a birdie should be no problem. So for a shot like this, I'm going to use maximum backspin to get the ball to stop quickly. I'm going to aim right of the hole. The reason being is there's a right to left wind. And the slope is slightly, if you look at those dots, they're moving in a right to left fashion. So the ball is definitely going to drift in a right to left fashion, land and probably kick a little bit more towards the hole. So I'm going to aim outside here. I'm going to use about 13 and a half yards power, which is about 79, 80% maximum backspin. 17 yard wedge. I'm going to use about 79, 78 percent power. All right, a little bit shorter than I thought. And another birdie. Alright, first par 3, 187 into the wind. You're going to add about 7 or 8 yards. You're looking at about 195. So this is the right club. A 5 iron is the correct club. I'm going to add a touch of backspin just to get the ball to stop. Aim left of the flag due to the wind coming in from the left. Alright, give it a swing. Hit the ding and it's a heartbeat.
Okay, this is a tricky putt here in front of the ball. This line would indicate right to left. This line indicates left to right. The ball is sitting just in a small valley left to right over here. This is not an easy putt by any means. You see how this ball starts in a right to left fashion, then it goes left to right and then it straightens again. So this is going to affect what happens to the ball as it leaves the putter face. It looks slightly more left to right to me so I'm going to be aiming on the left center of the hole. And it's in. Alright, another birdie. Okay, short par 4. This can be a very dangerous hole because often it's happened to me a couple of times where the ball lands even short of the green, kicks and rolls right over the green, leaving you over here somewhere. Uh, we're going to be using a 3 wood because my driver is just too long for this hole. I want to get some lift and some backspin to get the ball to stop pretty quick. Let's have a look from the front. Definitely left to right wind, but mostly a tail. Right. I'm very surprised that it's landing so far right at the flag because I aimed quite a bit left and I hit the ding. No reason for it to go so far left so quickly. But anyway, it is what it is. We'll move on. At least we're putting for an eagle. Fairly straight putt, but uh, there are some slight deviations over here which is very hard to pick up. So we'll be looking over here, right to left, right to left, straight, straight, straight. So there isn't too much happening nearer the hole, but there are deviations here in front of the hole to be to be concerned about. Look at it from the reverse angle again. Over here, it's just a little bit happening left to right, left to right, even over here. So. I'm going to aim just slightly right of the hole. The best thing that can happen is it drops. The worst thing that can happen is I miss it and I still score a birdie. Come back. Alright, pretty close. But an easy birdie. Alright, another short par 4, however this time we're heading into the wind, so we're probably not going to reach it. Probably going to land in this region or stop in this region of 300, Taking a 25 yard pitch shot, maximum backspin. These greens are hard, so they do tend to kick the ball forward. I'm looking at the slope right now, over here, and that is going to indicate to me that the ball, once it lands over here, is going to kick in this direction due to the left to right nature of it. I say left to right, I'm talking about from the player's perspective. Give me the camera angle I want anymore. Right, 
it came up a little on the dance floor a little bit shorter than I anticipated All right, left to right putt. Solid putt. All right, another par three. This one is playing about 165 with a three foot drop. Into the wind, we're going to add about 8. We're looking at about 173. So we're using a 180 iron. You can hit this at about, with a little bit of backspin, about 96, 97% power. Aiming left of the flag due to the wind coming in from the left. We got about 97. We don't want to risk being short in that bunker. Okay, rather a little bit long than a little bit short because short is going to always put you at a risk with that bunker. And uh, this putt is not a confidence inspiring putt. Right to left, downhill. And it's going to break more than it actually looks. Alright, the best thing that can happen here is a birdie. Worst thing that can happen is a par. Right, that's going to miss. It was a very difficult putt from there to walk away with a par. Just the second par in 11 holes so far. Right, another short par 4. Hitting into a headwind slash sidewind. We're aiming quite far right. This is tricky. We should clear this sand over here. Shouldn't be a threat. Hopefully it's going to stop in this region over here, either on the green or just on the fairway. Alright, that's a great finish. Leaves me putting for eagle. And uh, missing an eagle means a par at least. So definitely still a good outcome. Driving the green on a par 4 is always a wonderful thing. Very few times when driving a par 4 green is not great. Uh, but in this case it worked out fine. To give you an idea, if the ball had finished beyond this ridge over here, it could have been more difficult because then you have to counter, you have to factor in that the ball is going to hit the slope and then pick up speed and then roll away from the hole. Uh, it creates all sorts of calculation problems when you aren't on a flatter surface like in this, let's call it a, a valley. Uh, where you can properly gauge how much power you need. Right, let's get back to the putt. Looks like it's breaking left to right over here, left to right over there, and closer to the hole it starts being right to left. But it's doing all sorts of things. What we need to look do is look at the dots on the particular area that we're going to be putting from, which is over here, right to left, right to left. Here it becomes left to right, left to right, left to right. And it actually aims slightly left of the... It's back right to left of here. Let's aim slightly right of, this, of, this, of the uh, center of the hole. Drained it. There we go. Three eagles so far in eight, uh, what, 12 holes. 
Right, very risky hole this one. Most players carrying 280, 290, 300 are going to have this as a problem. However, we have the benefit of a strong tailwind here. I'm going to be giving the ball maximum backspin. I do expect that I will clear this danger zone of rough and brush and fescue over here. Hopefully land the ball in the region of 340 and get the ball to plug and stop in this region over here. Bunker is also a risk. That's a huge drive. Right, big risk, but a big reward because it leaves me a short approach shot to the hole. As you can see I calculated that pretty well to stop in this small but safe zone. The shot's playing at about 63 yards but we have a tailwind so I'm going to hit this at about 54 yards power which is 90% of a 60 yard wedge with a fair, fair amount of backspin. Now looking at the green makes me rethink what I need to do because there's quite a severe slope from right to left over here so if a ball lands near the pin it's definitely going to kick away from the pin to the left so we actually want to land the ball this side of the pin so that it kicks towards the hole so despite this being an almost straight shot I'm going to aim slightly left the wind is going to push the ball to the right and then hopefully when it lands it's going to kick a bit to the left this is not an easy shot by any means okay that came up a lot shorter than I expected It's going to leave me a very difficult right to left putt. It's probably not going to sink because it's just pretty difficult. Best thing we can hope for here is a par. Oh, get a birdie. Right, par 5. Now, this hole, no real danger on the tee shot. You've got plenty of fairway to work with over here. Alright, we're just going to give it a smash. Good ball. Right, 300 yard drive. Couldn't ask for much more because I am hitting into the wind. Alright, approach shot is definitely going to be a three wood, but uh, this slope in front of the green over here can cause big problems. Because if your ball lands over here and it kicks to the left, it's going to go towards this bunker or far away from the green. Uh, we don't want that. I'm hoping to carry in the region of 250, heading into the wind. And that should hopefully bring the ball. I would like to stop the ball on the green. Right, my swing meter lagged there a little bit, causing me to hit the ding just a touch early. And this is what I was worried about was that slope. So it's caused the ball to come back all the way onto the fairway over here. Alright. All 
Alright, I've got a couple of choices over here. I could use a full power shot with maximum backspin. Got about 60% power. And 61% power. Okay, good enough. That will enable me to get another birdie. Right, this little narrow piece of fairway shouldn't be a problem. Gonna land the ball in the region of 280, hitting into a win, so maybe about 270. It's quite a strong wind. I expect the shot should go no more than 290. Two ninety three. All right, hundred and seventeen. Take out a pitching wedge. This is playing at about one hundred and twenty three, hundred and twenty four, due to the side slash headwind. So I'm going to just add or reduce the spin just ever so slightly. Now, as you can see, there is a slope from left to right over here. So if the ball lands in this region, which is what the plan is, it is going to kick the ball more right towards the hole. So we're going to aim quite far left, because the wind is also bringing it back towards the hole. Plus the slope on the green is going to do that. Right, the power calculations are pretty good. I could have hit the ball a little bit more to the left, but uh, it then would have finished slightly closer to the hole. Still a tricky putt nonetheless. Another birdie. Okay, another par 4 that is drivable with the wind that we have. There are a few bumps over here in front of the fairway to be concerned about, as you can see, undulations. Right, so the plan is to land the ball in the region of 330 and let the ball kick onto the green. This slope over here will make the ball, if the ball comes in from this angle, this slope is going to push the ball in that direction. So actually, you want to aim it a little bit more to the center of the green, because if it rolls up here, it can at least, at least then feed back towards the hole. So, we are aiming over there, the wind is going to push it from left to right, and then the slope hopefully will bring it back. That's if we reach the green. Right, that's a pretty big drive. We're on the green. Just, just didn't make it. It would have been nice if the ball stopped over here somewhere where it would be a flatter putt. But uh, we've got a very big, 
uh, left to right slope over here which is going to immediately affect what happens to the ball as it leaves the putter face we definitely want to be aiming quite far left to compensate for this over here once it leaves this area it does become more gentle left to right All right, you can hope for an eagle, very unlikely, birdie's almost a guarantee. All right, not a bad attempt. Take the birdie. All right, now this is one of the more difficult holes in this game. Due to the fact that this particular fairway over here is very very thin very narrow hard to stop the ball there and there's also some undulations that can actually kick the ball away from where you plan to and the camera angles aren't great here so I'm having some difficulty deciding exactly how to play this shot so I really want to have a closer look at what's happening over here and this is too far, the ball's not going to make it that far Alright, I think what we're going to try and do is let the ball stop in the region of 300 just to play it safe Good ball Right, leaving us a 150 yard uh, shot to the pin so I'm going to use my 8 iron which is also rated at 150 add a bit of backspin to get the ball to stop I'm going to aim left of the flag one of the big risks in this game is if the ball rolls off the green over here you can go in here which is considered out of bounds and yeah you don't want to lose your ball out of bounds penalty stroke and losing a valuable ball Right, calculations were pretty much spot on again got heartbeat and uh, yeah that's going to be another birdie so let's just quickly recap what I did there although I didn't take a big risk on the tee shot I laid up a bit short uh, it was still a good thing to do sometimes you don't always have to drive the ball 100% power you set yourself up you play safe golf and safe golf can still result in a birdie All right so currently minus 18 through 17 holes last hole of the course I hope you've enjoyed my walkthrough so far let's see if we can get one more bird right the strategy for this hole can't really reach the green in one shot so we're gonna have to lay up a little bit short now what I don't like about this hole is this slope over here if you drive the green this slope typically if the ball comes in from this angle the slope can f feed the ball away from the hole leaving you in a very ugly spot uh, okay, I think what I'm going to try and do is give the ball less spin, get it to roll let's just see what happens there are some strategies you could intentionally lay up short over here and leave yourself a 60 to 70 yard wedge shot, maybe even 40 yards um, we're aiming at the right to allow the ball to feed back 
Let's see what happens. That's a huge drive! Alright, so we just short of the green, which is fine. We've got a 20 yard pitch, 3 extra feet of elevation, it makes this about 20. So I'm going to be using a 17 yard um, wedge. I'm not going to modify the spin too much because I want the ball to go a little bit further. Reducing the spin will reduce the distance the ball goes, increasing sorry I should say increasing the spin more spin reduces the distance the ball will go and reducing the spin will increase the distance I'm going to leave it in the region of in the center I just want the ball to roll land on the green and roll close to the hole to secure a birdie Should have aimed a little bit more right. Right, there we go. Okay, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed that. Let's just quickly recap the scorecard over here. We can't seem to see the... Where's the... Couldn't see the uh, front nine, but... Minus 19 scored in 18 holes. Nothing to be uh, ashamed about. That's a pretty decent score. I'm, I'm very happy with that. There were a couple of pars, one one or two opportunities which could have been birdies. So a minus 20, minus 21, even 22 could have been possible. Uh, the conditions were not the greatest either. But some solid golf play and knowledge of the game allowed me to score um, a very, very decent scorecard. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. Uh, your support uh, allows me to continue making content like this and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. Thank you and goodbye.